one, two, one, two, three. I first got interested in music uh, when I was going to church uh, at First Baptist Church of Summerall and then my grandparents' church at Hickory Grove um, where we would sing stuff like Amazing Grace and Bringing in the Sheaves with the Circle Be Unbroken. And probably my next big music uh, thing that got me really loving music was I remember being at my granny's house when I was about four or five years old and she had an old transistor radio and Elvis came on singing Heartbreak Hotel. And even though I was only four years old, uh, I felt like I knew what it was like to be in a Heartbreak Hotel. It really touched me. And um, so I just kind of feel like I had a real special connection uh, with music after that, after Elvis and church. So I got introduced to the blues um, probably first through classic rock. I was really into classic rock and I was into these bands like Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones. And as I got a little older and I'm looking at the album credits, I realized that um, some of the writers of these songs were from Mississippi, McKinley Morganfield and um, Alan Wolf and Muddy Waters. So that was my first introduction to the blues was via classic rock. When I was about 22 years old, I moved to Oxford, Mississippi. And a couple years after that, I started going to Junior Kimbrough's Juke Joint, which was in Holly Springs, about 30 miles from Oxford. We initially started going to Junior's because we couldn't buy beer on Sundays in Oxford and so we would drive to Marshall County across the county line and one day we were at the beer store and somebody mentioned that it was a juke joint with live blues down the road and so we started going to hear Junior Kimbrough and R.L. Burnside and we kind of got to where we were going um, every Sunday that we weren't out on the road working. Um, I, I must add to that too, that was when I was really learning to play the blues, but I went to college in Jackson, so I also heard some great blues uh, during my college years. Probably a little bit too much for my studies. But, uh, but yeah, so hanging out with R.L. Burnside and Junior Kimbrough and the Fat Possum label is when I really started trying to learn the blues on guitar. Uh, as far as the music and then just getting old has taught me the meaning of the blues. Yeah. Well, I'm going to the concert to the final world. Yeah, so when I was about um, 22 years old, I'd graduated from college and uh, had decided I was done with higher education and wanted to pursue music. At the time, my cousin Chris was living in Oxford, Mississippi. Uh, had a band called the High Tops with a guy named John Stewart. They started it together. Uh, John's currently playing bass in Wilco. And so my cousin was getting married and they had this band, um, which strangely enough was being booked by Tommy Couch Jr. Um, they had this band that was up and working and he called me and said, you want to take my place in the band? And so that's how I started playing music for a living. And then I really got addicted to not doing jobby jobs. Uh, once I realized I could make money playing music, I was like, well, I don't want to do anything else because I love music and I hate working for other people. So that's how I got started and I've been doing music ever since. I'm 60. And I started when I was about 22. Uh, the money's been up and down, but just the fact that I'm still doing it feels like a success to me. So I'm 60 and I've been listening to music a long time. And so I have a lot of influences at this point. Uh, 
The main thing that feels like it influences my music is the music of Mississippi at this point. Um, like I got started with classic rock, listening to ZZQ um, in the 70s when classic rock was just what was on the radio. But really that, as I've said, that led me back towards the blues and um, Mississippi inspires me and the music from here, uh, Jimmy Rogers, father of country music, and Robert Johnson, um, and, uh, and Muddy Waters, and so many great musicians, Elvis. And then on a personal level, um, I was lucky to get to play guitar with Duff Dura and R.L. Burnside, and uh, that was just huge for me. But it just blows my mind how many great musicians are from Mississippi. I was in Clarksdale the other day and ran into Charlie Musselwhite, my harmonica uh, hero, just hanging out in a restaurant. So, Mississippi. Well, it's hard to say uh, how music makes me, why music makes me feel passionate, but I just know that it always has. Music's always affected me. A, an emotional way um, you know if it's sad music I might start crying Willie Nelson song you're always on my mind always seems to bring a tear and then I hear certain other stuff you know um, and it makes me want to dance I feel music and the fact that I'm now able to help other people feel music there's no greater feeling than when you can look in somebody's eyes until they're moved by a lyric or maybe their butt will start twitching and you're like, you know that they're feeling the rhythm. So one of my favorite things about being a musician is um, I get to meet and hang out with other musicians. Um, my my best friends and and all of my lovers and wives have come from playing music. That's um, one of my favorite things about it, the people I've got to meet. And the perks can be amazing. Um, one of my least favorite parts about it as I get older is it's a very disorienting lifestyle because you're always traveling. And it can be a challenge to maintain a home life. That's about as far as I'm going to get into that. I would have to say what makes a great musician is what makes a great boxer or what makes a great uh, mathematician. It's dedication. It's a discipline. I was watching this interview with Mike Tyson not long ago, and he was saying, you know, talent is great, but without discipline, it's nothing. And um, so, you know, we all love music and we all feel passionate about music, but that's cool. But are you willing to put in the time um, that it takes to master the craft? That's what makes a great musician. Everybody's had to practice. Miles Davis has to practice, you know. Um, so that's what I believe it takes is discipline. Well, I don't believe a person can say of themselves that they're a great musician because that's something somebody else has to say. But I feel like I'm pretty good, and I think the reason is is because I try really hard. Uh, I've never felt like the world's greatest guitar player, singer, writer, anything, but I really try hard. And uh, I'd say that's my greatest strength as a musician is uh, just... You know, like my grandpa told me, whatever you do, be it great or small, do it right or don't do it at all. And so when it comes to cooking, I don't do it at all. But when it comes to guitar, I really try. Really what I think makes me unique as a musician is that um, I, for a long time, have kind of searched for my own voice. And really, if you... If you're going to have your own voice on an instrument or your voice, uh, you're going to be influenced by other people, but it's who you choose it from and how you use it. And for me, the people that I chose to learn from and listen to was the ones that resonated with my heart. 
And so, as I reflect that out, I think that's what makes anything I do unique is just um, my choices, what music resonated with me. So if I could speak to my younger self, um, as I was starting out in the music industry, uh, I think one of the things I would say to my younger self is just because it's free doesn't mean it's uh, healthy. As a musician, you get out there in a working environment and some of the perks are free stuff, um, free booze, free drugs, free sex. Uh, and that's all real cool but it's a real distraction from music and life, and it can be. And if you grow up a country boy, you don't have a whole lot of those resources handy, and then all of a sudden they're around for free, many of us have not made the best choices. Um, if my younger self would have listened, and I seriously doubt it, I would say, come on, Mom, man, listen, remember what your mom said and make some good choices. Well, the tips I would give young musicians is to practice. Don't just rely on your talent. Um, and the better you get at your instrument, the more fun it is to play. I mean, at this point, practicing doesn't feel like work. It just feels like fun. So practice, make practice something you do every day. And um, learn some other skills that maybe go along with music, like accounting and basic car mechanics and stuff you're going to need out on the road. And, uh, you know, watch out for juke joint floozies and poison in your booze. Yeah, and be careful out there. Well, I have to say, with the current state of the music industry, I'm, um, I'm in the dark about a lot of it. I mean, I... I Grew up in the 70s, started in the 80s, and it's changed so much. Um, a lot of it's a mystery to me. Uh, I feel very fortunate that I have a 21-year-old daughter who kind of keeps me hip to new music and technology, and that it's nice to be hooked up with uh, Malico because they're gonna help me navigate some of the other changes in the industry. But, uh, you know, I'm old. I mean, I don't know what's going on out there, but uh, old people, I have a few tricks too, so, you know, that's cool too. Well, as being a musician, you, your perspective gets changed a lot. I have to say one of the things that's changed it the most is it took me out of my little uh, small town Mississippi um, growing up and I've been over a lot of the world and so Traveling in itself will change your perspective, getting to be around people that aren't like you. And so you have to learn how to communicate with, with diverse people. Still somehow try to hang on to what makes you unique, you know, your connection to home. Um, I guess one of the things that changed my perspective about was just to meet humans from all over the world and realize we are essentially the same. We all want the same things. Yes, there has been a couple of times in my life when I thought about giving up music as a profession. I could never give it up as something I do, but just to give it up as a way to make um, a living. One of those things happened when I got in my mid-30s and people my age were going off and doing other stuff and you start to question it. But um, I got through that time period because I think just the love of the music, even though there's ups and downs, I just loved, uh, loved the music. And whenever I've really thought about doing something else and really taken a hard look at the opportunities out there and my own particular mindset, 
I realize I'm in a great spot. This is the easiest way for me to get through life is doing what I love and just staying true to it. Uh, I've thought about quitting a couple times. I thank the good Lord I never did because when you hang in there with something, you never know what's coming around the corner that could be good, you know? So, I'm so glad I didn't quit. I like to fight um, for things that I believe in. I've, as I've gotten older, I don't like to fight for the sake of fighting or argue for the sake of arguing, but in life there's things that are worth fighting for, and uh, I hope that's the person I've become, that if I'm fighting mad these days is that I'm fighting for a good reason. Hopefully something that's a little bit bigger than my ego got bruised, you know. Um, like somebody needs help. I believe one of the things that really makes my music unique is um, I'm from Mississippi and I accept it. Um, and if you're if you're from Mississippi, you know uh, it's good and bad. Um, but when I've always lived here, I've traveled all over the U.S. and uh, lots of other parts of the world, but I've always lived in Mississippi. And I've always represented it, I hope, in a good fashion. And I think that makes me unique. Now, my version of Mississippi is not B.B. King's version. Uh, it's, it's my version, you know. But just wanting to be yourself in some, instead of somebody else helps, too. So my creative process when I write new music is, um, if I hear somebody say something that I think is funny or wise, I always keep a pencil on me, try to, and I write it down. If I hear something like a phrase and I'm like, wow, man, that's a great phrase, then I write it down. And I also catalog my music ideas. If I'm sitting around, uh, chilling out at my house and come up with a good music idea. I usually use my phone and I'll record it on my phone. Now sometimes a song, I'll get real excited about it and sit down and write the song. Um, and that's beautiful when it happens. It's like a gift from above. But a lot of times uh, it'll be little pieces of inspiration and then when I sit down to purposely write songs not that I'm just jotting down ideas but I've set aside the time in my special writing place then I can go back to my catalog of music ideas and my catalog of lyric ideas and I start seeing what what's resonating here you know what's what's making my old stoned head kind of vibrate this morning you know? and that's where I pull a lot of my ideas from so I have competed in some music competitions. Uh, being in the music industry is a competition. Um, everybody that wants to be in the music industry is out there hustling, they're practicing, uh, they're doing their best. By nature, it's competitive. Um, but, you know, a lot, a lot of different competitions uh, from high school talent show third place uh, to you know uh, trying to get in jazz fest or different festivals or stuff like that so I feel like I'm in a music competition every day uh, it's competitive and that's just the nature of it and if you're not a competitive person um, you know well do something that's not competitive. Music is competitive.
So what I'm hoping to accomplish in the next year is uh, I've got a lot of new songs. I'm really enjoying working in the Malico studio here. I want to get out and support my new album that's coming out, Old Blue, and uh, go ahead and get started on the next album with Katrina. And as far as what I hope to do the next five um, to 10 years, well, I'm 60 years old, so I'm just trying to stay alive, you know? That's, uh, that's, that's the main thing on the agenda is just waking up. Um, but it's a blessing. Um, and I do have agendas and goals, but at this time of my life, I take it day by day too. So I believe that I have 13 albums at this point, and the new album I'm going to be releasing on Black Dog Malico, Old Blue, will be album number 14. I do believe, but uh, you know, when you throw in uh, albums that were cassette release only and came out in Europe only, it's kind of hard to tell, but um, more than I have fingers. excited about my new album. I just listened to it with Kent Bruce, our uh, mastering engineer here at Malico, and I have to say it sounds pretty damn good. Um, cut it here with Nick Smith and Anna Hudson, Ted Ganey on drums, and um, you know it's hard to be objective, but I love it. <laughs>